The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our epistle reading for this past Sunday from Romans 14, verses 5 and 6, where the Apostle Paul writes, One man considers one day more sacred than another, Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God, and he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. My dear friends in Christ, Throughout the history of Christianity, the, the church has always been plagued with different troubles from within and without. And, well, the unbelieving world is always going to make it hard for Christians in this sinful world. That problem coming from outside of the church Oh, for example, what the unbelieving world loves to do is loves to ridicule and criticize the church, condemn the church for being judgmental in the way it calls things sins. And here especially, I suppose, we're thinking of things like you know, evolution, the teaching of evolution, abortion, euthanasia. Those key teachings, well, homosexuality, those are all things that are called sin and, and there's so much more. Gossip, lying, think of all of those things. The unbelieving world loves to look at us and say that things like that either aren't sin or they're not really a big deal. And really, it doesn't matter to us what people may think or what science may say. The fact of the matter is, is what matters to us as believing children of God is what the Bible says, what God's Word says. And, well, thank God that when we think about what the Bible says, it's not just that it talks about sin, but what it also and especially does is it talks about God's answer to sin. It talks about Jesus, our Savior, and our way to eternal life. In Christianity, there's also all kinds of trouble that's caused because of different interpretations of the Bible. And when we talk about different interpretations of the Bible, really what happens there is maybe the authority, the truthfulness of the Bible is questioned or challenged. Maybe one portion of the scriptures is emphasized over another, and because of that, what happens is that the Bible is made to say things that it doesn't really say. Uh, the truth is, is that when one looks at the Bible and sees what the words really say, there aren't going to be all of those different interpretations. We need to look at what the Word says. It's, it's sad that differences like that exist. But concerning those differences that exist, the Apostle John says, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But now when he talks about what a false prophet, what is a false prophet? Well, we need to recognize that a false prophet is not always an unbeliever. It's not always an unbeliever. If I were to tell you something that is false, contrary to the scripture, then what would happen is, well, I'd be a false prophet because I could be leading people astray, leading people away from the truth of God's word. That's why it's so important for us always to be watching out and looking for things that are contrary, deviating away from the word of God, 
because of the harm that they can cause us. And, and even no, no matter how insignificant a thing might be, we need to be watching out and careful, looking out for those things because any false teaching is like a cancer which really is only inclined to keep on growing and getting worse. But now, even in churches that agree on Bible teachings, there, there can be troubles, there can be differences, there can be tendencies to disagree on different things about which the scriptures are silent. And that happens because often we're weak in our faith. There were Roman Christians that Paul is talking about here that they had their questions about on which day people were supposed to worship and, and about their diets. And, and the questions that they were dealing with were things that the scriptures didn't specifically speak on. Well, Paul said, one man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. Oh, in Rome there were many sacrifices that were made to idols, to pagan gods. And and after those sacrifices had been made, what often was the case is that meat from those sacrifices was taken to the local meat market to be sold. And, and if a Christian went to a local meat market to buy some meat, he never really knew for sure, he couldn't know for positive if that meat that was being sold, if it had been earlier sacrifice to an idol or not. And there were those who said that eating meat that had been sacrificed to an idol, that that was just plain wrong. And there were others that said that it wasn't wrong because, well, an idol isn't real, so what does it really matter? But see, now the Bible doesn't address something like this specifically. And so that meant that the Roman Christians were free to either eat that meat or not eat that meat. But then the fact of the matter is, is that what Paul says here is that no matter what their decision was, the Christian wasn't supposed to judge those who made a different decision and say that they were sinning. Paul said, accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. The fact of the matter is, is that our God does give us a great deal of freedom when it comes to our Christian lives. He hasn't told us exactly how we are to worship him. We could worship him quite a bit differently than we, we currently do if that's what we chose to do. The Bible doesn't tell us, so oh, for example, should a pastor wear a, a black robe, a white robe, or, or should he even wear a robe at all? The Bible doesn't tell us about something like that. The Bible doesn't tell us just exactly what our churches are supposed to look like. God does tell us to worship him, but he doesn't tell us on which day that is supposed to be done. God doesn't tell us how many church meetings we're supposed to have. And, and well, as we're going through some of the things that we're dealing with, with this COVID-19, maybe it'd be nice if God said, this is the way you must do things, but, but he doesn't. And that's why we struggle with saying, how are we best supposed to worship God in a time like this? Well, concerning these things, though, what Paul says is this, each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Whatever we do in matters that's not commanded by God, 
Well, what Paul says we'll need to do is we'll need to do them in a way that's most spiritually beneficial for all those people who are involved according to our conscience. And, and our conscience is a key in things like this because Christians don't want to sin against their conscience. Oh, for example, maybe just think about that subject of conscience. The scriptures don't tell us that it's wrong to have a drink, to have a glass of wine, a, a, a bottle of beer, a, a mixed drink. It doesn't tell us that that's wrong, but yet there can be Christians who would look at that and their conscience would really trouble them and say that that's not something that, that should be done. And for that person, he shouldn't drink but then at the same time, he shouldn't also condemn that person whose conscience says that it's okay for him to have a drink. Well, th there, there are all sorts of things that are involved here, and especially what we always want to think about is our love and care and concern for our fellow Christians. But now, the real question here is, are we strong or weak in the faith? And I'm sure that we'd all like to think about ourselves as being strong in the faith, but, but that isn't always the case. God makes us strong in the faith when we're close to him and his word. We're weak in the faith when we would neglect or wander away from God, his word, God and his word, not have that word as richly in our lives as we should. And the fact of the matter is, is that the strength or weakness of our faith that work varies throughout the course of our lives. That's the way it's going to be. Well, when we're weak, then let's remember the strength that God can give us through word and sacrament. And if we're strong, then let's also remember that it, the strength that we have, it's because God has given to us through his word and sacrament, that it's only because of God that we have that strength. But whether we're weak or strong, let's remember then that since the Holy Spirit has called us to faith and has made us believing children of God, what he's going to do is he's always going to be with us and he's always going to work through the word to help us to grow in our faith. But, but as we're in the faith, let's always watch out for any error, for any differences from the word of God, because Satan's going to use them and he wants them to be like a cancer that would infect us and get worse and worse. Try to destroy our faith. So again, are we weak or strong in the faith? Whether we're weak or strong in the faith, let's keep on looking to God's word and the sacraments to build us up, to strengthen our faith. And whether we're weak or strong in the faith, let's be thankful that our God has graciously worked faith in our hearts so that we know that Jesus lived and died for us and paid for our sins and, and it's because of him, not our strength or our weakness, but because of him that we can be sure of heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, Living in this sinful world means we're faced with different struggles. Struggles with Satan and the unbelieving world. Struggles with false preachers and false doctrines. And, and struggles when our faith is weak. Lord, keep sending us your Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith so that we can deal with our struggles in this sinful world and find our strength in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.